Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad that you guys are joining me today because we are going to be doing part two of my two-part video series on tips and tricks for your Bible study sessions, okay? So basically what I'm going to be showing you today is five tips on how to get the most out of using your Bible app as an extra study tool during your Bible study sessions. If you have not watched part one of my video series, stop this video, go watch that video, and then come back and watch this video. If you have already watched the part one, I won't hold you up any longer. Let's jump right into the video. And so don't mind my screen because Demont dropped it and yeah, it's full my stuff right now, but don't mind that. So what I would recommend is that you have an actual account so that you can keep record of like your highlights and um, the images that you've made in the app. You can connect with friends on here, send them scriptures, like other friends' scriptures. This is what my account looks like, and I can see all of uh, my badges right here. See, it says add friends, highlights, images, like that. So that's the very first thing that I wanna show you before I go into the actual tips. First tip that I am going to show you that I would recommend doing is to set up notifications for your verse of the day. I hope that you guys can see this because my phone is looking real ghetto right now. What you would do is just go into the verse of the day, go to these three little dots up here at the top. Okay, that went to the verse. Go to these three little dots and then you'll hit notification settings here at the bottom. And then I have both set up for get um, daily push notifications for the actual verse and then for the actual image. I don't know if it's like a specific time that they do it. I'm pretty sure that I didn't set up the timing, um, but it really helps to get that verse or that image of that verse when you least expect it and that has really helped me through you know some tough times if I'm having a rough day. A second tip I want to show you how to create an image. They have a lot of really cool backgrounds on here that you can use. They're so pretty. Some of them are so pretty. Really bright ones. Let's just choose this one. Choose image. And so what it automatically does is just um, it puts the scripture in there for you already. You can change the size, how big you want it. Um, you can change the text. They have different texts that you can change it to. And then this is the color, whether you want it to be black or white. And you can actually choose different colors, like if you don't want black and white you can hit on the little dots here and then um, it'll bring up other colors for you then over here is just if you want it to be set to the side to the middle to the other side and then here is like if you want the background kind of blurred you can blur the background out um, the brightness of it you can make it super bright or super dim then once you're done you go to the top and save the image here so I'll just hit save and so the image is saved and then where I showed you your account let's hit done go to our account go to images and then see it'll show you the images that you created. And you can also hit those three little dots there, click share, and then save the image. And you can save the image to your actual phone. The third tip that I want to show you, you can actually use the app to compare translations. So what I'm gonna do is just use the, um, the verse of the day and hit show full chapter. Right now it's in NIV, you can see at the top, but you can change it to, these are my, my most used, the NCV version or the King James version. Yeah, they have a lot of different translations in English. 
but you can also change the language if English is not your native language. They have so many different languages on here, which I think is super cool. What I usually do is I'll read it in NCV, which I think is an easier translation to understand. Once I understand that, I'll go to the King James Version. I'll change it over. We'll read this, the same passage, just to make sure that they um, are translating the same message and that they correspond with one another. So yeah, I think that's super cool and it's super easy and accessible to do it that way. What I also think is super cool is the options that you have for sharing scriptures or highlighting them. So down here, you can see all of the buttons that you can use once you tap on the verse. So you can tap on as many verses as you'd like. And once you tap on them, it puts those little dots up under them. That's how you know that they, they are selected. And then you can choose share. And so you can share them with someone through text message or add them to your notes, which is something that I usually do. Um, or send them through Messenger or Snapchat or whatever you use, or you can just simply copy it. Um, or like I was telling you, you can create an image out of it and then it takes you back to that screen that we were at um, to create an image. So you can create an image out of whatever verse that you want to. And I think that's really cool because it just helps you remember the verse and you can make it your screensaver if you wanted to. They have so many different colors of highlighters down here at the bottom. You can create more colors with the little dots. You can change the highlight color, um, but my favorite color right now because of springtime is this pastel purple over here. I just love that color. Once I've highlighted it, now you can check what you've highlighted through your um, profile like I showed you in the beginning, but you can actually add notes to what you've highlighted. So um, you can either add notes here within the app like on the actual whatever you highlight it or what I like to do is reselect the verse and I'll add it to my notes and so um, right here is just trying to add it to my notes just as a random note but I'll go down here I would just select daily devotions and then create a new note or I can put it in past notes that I have created so that's super easy to do and um, you can bookmark it you can copy it but I think it's really cool all the little tools that they have in inside of the app while you're actually reading that you can use you can easily note and highlight things the next thing that I want to show you is how to search so right here when you hit the search button down at the bottom when you click the search button they show you a few different topics at the top what does the Bible say about love peace faith healing marriage resurrection then they also have these emojis right here which I think is super cute you can click on if you're feeling happy or sad or loved or joyful what I like to do is if I'm thinking of a specific uh, scripture and I can't think of like the actual location I'll put in like some keywords of the scripture and then it'll bring up all the scriptures that have those keywords and then I can find what I'm looking for there what I also think is cool is I can put Bible names in here if I am looking for a specific person it will tell me where his story is and all of the places in the Bible where his name is mentioned. So the search app is really cool, if, especially if you know what you're looking for, but you don't know exactly where it is. Technology is so cool. It's like the whole Bible is in here. So if you put keywords of what you're looking for, this search bar will find it for you so I think that's super cool now what I want to move on to showing you is how to use the narrator the narrator to your advantage 
So what I love about using the narrator to my advantage is, um, so the only, I'll show you the versions that have them. So these little icons right here show you which versions have the narrator and the NIV or the King James versions are the ones that I use the most. But let's say that I'm reading something in the Bible and I don't know how to pronounce either the name of the place or the name of the person. I will have it read it to me so that I understand it. So let's go, let's go to Jeremiah because I know I was just reading that. Okay, perfect example. The words of Jeremiah, son of Hilkiah, one of the priests at um, Anathoth in the territory of Benjamin. So, you know, it has a, a lot of different Bible names and maybe some places, Anathoth, that a lot of people wouldn't know how to pronounce. Not everybody's going to know how to pronounce that. And... Sometimes it doesn't matter, you can read past it, but I like to know that I'm pronouncing it correctly, so I'll just use the narrator to show me. The prophet Jeremiah, chapter one. The words of Jeremiah, son of Hilkiah, oh, one of the right. priests at Anathoth, oh, I said that right. in the territory of Benjamin. The word of the Lord came to him in the 13th year of the reign of Josiah, son of Ammon, king of Judah, and through the reign of Jehoiakim, son yeah, of Josiah, king of Judah, down to the fifth month of the eleventh year of Zedekiah, son of Josiah, king of Judah, when the people of Jerusalem went into exile. So, how do you do that is you just hit this little play button down here and he'll just start reading. Now, y'all see that? That would have been hard to read through. That's a lot of different names and some different places and stuff like that. And this ain't even the worst. There's some harder names and some harder places in here that, you know, are difficult to read. I'm going to go to Matthew. I'm going to go to the first chapter, which usually shows the genealogy of the person that you're reading about. And I'll go to the, let's just say you have the King James Version. So um, there's a lot of names here, a lot of names here. And um, most of the time I would just uh, start here and not really read through the generations or the names because I didn't know how to say them or how to pronounce them. And it just stressed me out. It just stressed me out. I'm looking like, what? I, I can't say all of that. A lot of times this is important to know because you know who Jesus is linked to and how he's linked to them through who. So you could read this yourself or you could just hit this play button. And he'll read it the Gospel you. according to Matthew, chapter 1. The book of the generation of Jesus Christ, the son of David, the son of Abraham. Abraham begat Isaac, and Isaac begat Jacob, and Jacob begat Judas and his brethren, and Judas begat Phares and Zerah of Thamar, and Phares begat Esram, and Esram begat Aram, and Aram begat Aminadab, and Minadab begat Nassan, and Nassan begat Salmon, and Salmon begat Boaz of Rahab, and Boaz begat Obed of Ruth, and Obed begat Jesse, and Jesse begat David the king. Okay, so you get the point. So basically, it's so much easier to have him read the names and then you follow along because when I hear him read it, instead of me kind of trying to struggle to figure out what the name is or how to say it I actually start to remember some of these people as he read as he reads off their names so I'll be like oh Josephat I heard of him before oh Abraham Isaac Jacob oh I know them Jesus was related to them through what and so at first I don't even care about this part I'm looking like okay where was he in the manger because I, I can't even you know read these names but now it's so much easier 
for me to be able to understand those things. And this is important too, of who he was related to and how he was related to them. So I use the narrator a lot. The last tip that I want to show you guys is the plans. This is everything listed at the bottom. Um, the plans button is right here in the middle. And what you'll do is usually it'll default to your plans that you've already started or you're currently doing. Um, what I would do is go to find plans. So it'll show you um, what's popular um, and you can slide over here and it'll show you different um topics that you can choose from depending on what you're going through loss jealousy joy temptation and you can click that topic and then it'll take you into all of these different plans um, that have to do with that specific topic I'll show you what one looks like when you go in here it'll tell you an overview of the plan uh, about the publisher it'll tell you plans that are related to this plan down here which I love and then it'll tell you how long the plan is so this one specifically is three days and then you'll just hit start um, you can do it by yourself or with friends so I'll choose by myself and private and then it'll show up in my plans here. And then once you go in here, it'll show you the actual devotional and then all the scriptures. So once you so once you listen to that, I'm guessing that you would read this and um, then you would hit next and it'll take you to the scriptures as they're listed. So I'll go back here just to show you what it looks like. So once I clicked past the devotional, it automatically checked that off. And then once I click past and read through these scriptures, it'll check all of these off. And then it'll have the check through the whole day for my first day. And just to keep your Bible study interesting, because you can read different plans on different things and see how different scriptures correspond to different topics. They literally have plans for almost anything that you can think of marriage um, Easter new to your faith dating this is really really cool um, because you have specific help for specific things that you may be going through when my husband is gone on the road sometimes for work it's really easy to let the spirit of fear torment you. You know, you hear little things, you see little things in the dark. And so I can just, you know, click the topic fear and read through a devotional about fear and ease my mind and give me some peace behind it. And then it'll give me scriptures relating to fear and things of that nature. Okay, so we've been through all of these little buttons here at the bottom. The last button I'm gonna show you is how you can get back to your profile up here and videos. So it also has videos on here that you can watch about the gospel, how to read the Bible, wisdom, just different things. So that was the last tip so yeah okay guys so that pretty much sums up all five of my tips on how to get the most out of your bible app as an extra study tool if you enjoyed this video please give it a big thumbs up hit that subscribe button right down there guys i just want you to understand that your bible study is a big part of our walks with God and our relationship with him. It is one of the main ways that he communicates with us. So jumping into your word and understanding and dissecting it is very, very important. Know that the Bible is not a boring book at all. There is love stories in there. There is drama in there. There is lots of action in there, some mystery. And most importantly, there is love letters from your heavenly father to you. So all you have to do is ask him for understanding, desire to learn it, desire to understand it, and he'll give you understanding of it. That 
pretty much sums up this video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. I hope that you guys enjoyed this two-part video series. If you have not watched part one, I will link it in the description box below. And I hope that you guys have a blessed, beautiful, and productive, productive day. I will see you guys in my next video. Love you. Bye.